All right, so um, continuing on the thing that we did in the last video, where we uh, created a lexeme out of uh, a single keyword that was coming in uh, through our input, we will now pass the uh, handling off to a parser, which will uh, take that lexeme and convert it into something called an abstract syntax tree. Um, that will be quite a naive solution at the moment because we just want to make that one keyword work. But once we start to add more functionality to our language, that will become a little bit more involved and complex. But for now, we're going to try to step through things very simply. So uh, what we've done so far with the lexer is let's say that we take a very simple uh, example of an allocation into a variable. So we take the integer 1 and we want to allocate it to the variable a. What the lexer does is it will um, take a and uh, recognize it as a variable and uh, store that as the value a. Then it will find the equal symbol and recognize that as an allocation and store the value as equals. Um, finally, it will detect the integer and then store it as the value one. Uh, the way that we've practically made that work with the quit keyword is um, we, we've defined a state machine, which is basically like an enum. Uh, so it's an enumeration of various states. Uh, we initialize that with the start state. That means that our state machine is currently in the start state, which is kind of like an undefined, it doesn't know what it is yet state. Uh, I also have an array of keywords that are supported by our language. In this case, it's only the keyword quit. But uh, we will add more to them. So here, the keyword quit comes in uh, typed by one of our uh, users. And uh, they hit enter, and quit is evaluated uh, through our lexer. Um, first, the lexer breaks it up into individual characters. Because, again, I do not use regular expressions to lex uh, my code. I uh, do it character by character and use the state machine to keep track of where I am. Um, so the way that that works is we have uh, a pointer to our first um, character. Uh, and that will be uh, placed inside a buffer. It's a temporary buffer that just rebuilds what we are reading. So now we have the, uh, the letter Q in our buffer. We can start comparing our buffer to the array of um, keywords that we uh, support in our language. So we have a comparison there that is constantly checking, is Q um, a subset of my array of keywords, which it isn't yet. So then we read the next character and put that in our buffer, again evaluating it to our array. Um, read the next character, put it in our buffer, evaluate it to our array, uh, and, and so on until we uh, read the word quit now, the uh, evaluation to our um, keyword array uh, returns true, because indeed quit is in there. So um, we can switch our state machine to a uh, keyword, meaning that we are now dealing with a keyword that was detected. And we can write out our lexeme something like this. The idea is key for keyword, and the value is quit. So that's sort of what we've done so far in the previous video. What we're going to do now is to transform that um, lexeme into an abstract syntax tree that has a start key, which is an array of uh, instructions that it can uh, execute. Um, I hope you can see that once we start nesting that structure uh, with keys and arrays, that we can actually build logic out of that. But for now, all we have is the, um, the instruction to quit, which will quit our program. So that's what we're going to build in this video. Okay, so I realize now that um, what we looked at in the presentation was that uh, we would set our state machine to be of state keyword, and then we would create the lexeme uh, 
um, for our keyword quit. Uh, apparently, last time we actually stopped before doing that. So um, the way this probably would look is something like um, we will allocate a lexeme, and that will be of a type, which will then have an ID field. Uh, we said that would be key, and it would have a value field, and we said that would be uh, quit. So I might as well stick with the capitalization um, theme. We have to implement this type because uh, we don't have it at the moment. So that will become a struct with an ID field. And for now, let's just leave those as strings. Those will probably become custom types later. Um, and now Lexium isn't used because obviously we need um, to create our parser. Um, we, will, we will do the same thing here as we did in Lexer, as, uh, as in we will, we, will, we will use a channel, we'll call it in as well, and that will be a channel of type Lexeme. Uh, yeah, that, that, that should work. Um, so let's create a constructor for that. A new parser. And that will return uh, a pointer to parser. And so let's do that. Um, implement it. And then we need to actually allocate memory for the channel. So in this case, the Lexeme channel will actually just be created, yes. So um, in is make uh, a channel of type Lexeme. And then I think that should be OK. Uh, obviously, we need to put a comma at the end, otherwise Go will get upset. Uh, yeah, so now we've we've actually uh, allocated memory for that channel, so um, it will actually work. And then um, we can do the same thing over here. We are going to change that in maybe like the next video. We will change the structure of our program a little bit because uh, I came up with something different. But again, I want to make functional code first and then make it look better. Um, so in this case, uh, Lexine comes in from the channel. I uh, hope I'm doing this correctly. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, and let's just consume it into nothing right now, so Go will not complain. And then here we might just do something like, um, this isn't perfect, but for now we can do this and just make sure that we create uh, the parser here. So we say new parser. That should work. And then we can do something here with, in fact, we won't even need to allocate. We can just say straight up lexer.parser uh, dot in and send over our lexeme. Uh, that should work, yes. So now we have um, the code coming in here, um, the lexeme coming in here in the parser. And let's just try that out for a second. So um, we can just uh, print lex and see how, what that looks like. Uh, we will need to actually send the word quit over then. So, right. Um, Does it need to be? Yes. OK. Uh, in fact, we have a deadlock. That's interesting. So that's because the channel isn't being consumed, is it? Um, when we said, oh, um, let's, let's quit. I was in the wrong uh, pane. Yeah, so because we're actually not calling run, 
And this is very hacky, uh, but let's roll with it for now. So now we're actually consuming the channel. So basically what was happening was because we weren't, and in fact, it needs to be a go routine, uh, because we're not, we're not running this code right here, um, the the channel wasn't being consumed, so nobody was reading from that channel, and we were sending to it um, multiple times, and and so um, it it couldn't do anything with that, and it created a deadlock. And uh, now that we are running this here as a go routine, um, because if I was to run it like this, this might make sense to you or it might not, but if I was to run it like this, um, the program would block on this line uh, and it would never reach uh, this right here. Um, however, if I um, fork it up to a go, go routine, then now this will just run in the background. So uh, let's have a quick look. And in fact, it's now printing out our lex scene. So you can see that uh, the values are key and quick. Um, a better package actually to use, um, if you want to really inspect uh, something like that, is um, uh, a pack package called GoSpew. And you can then just do spew.dump, uh, let it import the spew package, and then uh, try again. Now you can actually see a little bit better the fields, uh, the types, the length, and um, the value of um, an object like that. So that's useful. Also, let's not forget to um, create a new create a new branch for uh, part two of the video because I want to keep track of things. Right. So now that we've got our um, lexemes coming in. Uh, we need to probably process them. Let's just follow the same um, pattern for now and then we will refactor it most likely in the, not the upcoming video, but the one after that. We will refactor the entire thing. So the one upcoming will be about executing the code and then um, Yes, then after that we will uh, we will have a working code base and then we can refactor it. Uh, so I want to actually take in a Lexeme here. Um, yeah. And uh, return an error. Okay. So, uh, first of all we need to um, define a data structure for our uh, AST. Uh, I'm going to keep it simple and uh, quite in line with the Python example that we had. Um, so that would be a um, map of a string as keys and string as and an array of strings as value. Um, yeah, so that <clears throat> sorry, that would create a data structure much like um, this basically. So it will have some sort of a key and then um, oops. It will have an array with uh, like a value in there. So yeah, um, and also like we showed in the um, presentation, that we will um, initialize the first key as start. Um, that means we probably have to build it over here first. So let's make. Um, a map uh, of string, uh, which is a array of strings. Um, I think I might have to actually give a zero there. Do I? Yeah. And then um, we can pass that in here. All right, that's good. Um, I wonder if I need to, but for now I will. Uh, so is the um, start equals um, 
Yeah. So most likely I can actually take away that zero there. Uh, and now we have a start find. So that means that here, uh, when Alex is coming in, and Alexine is coming in, um, mm. we want to get its value. For now we can just do that because um, we don't have, we don't need logic here yet. So um, it will become parser AST, um, then the key start um, equals append uh, parser of AST. Oops. Um, with that key again, uh, and then we want to add lex dot value. Did I do val or value? Val. Um, add that. Let's just return uh, no error so that Go is happy. Mm, pass this to um, parser process. In fact, let's not handle the error for now because I'm lazy. Uh, that means we need to remove the allocation. All right. That is somewhat correct. Um, so once we've done that, uh, we can actually just uh, let's dump the AST. And let's see what we're working with. All right. So here we can see that we indeed have a, a starting key that we can start traversing this uh, map structure with. And then uh, we encounter one um, command, basically, like one keyword, which is quit. Uh, we don't have an e executor yet. Uh, we're going to make that in the next video. But um, for now, we've, we're building the structures of what we're going to need in following videos. Uh, and following steps in this process, because this, this will be quite of a, a long process, um, especially me having to explain it while I'm doing it. But uh, we'll just try to continue on.